Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Chanel Marche, and if you're new to my channel, welcome. Um, wow, this is amazing. I can't believe that when I was just trying to give some informative information on what's going on out here, I was penalized for that. I was penalized for a week. I couldn't upload. And it's a shame that this is what this world has come to, where we can't even sound the alarm or blow the whistle on what's going on. It's sad. We really don't have freedom of speech anymore. We have to be careful what we say. So <laughs> I really hope and pray that all of us as children of the Lord stay in heavy prayer and really make sure that we are connected and rooted and planted in the vine, staying connected to the vine so that we're in the knowing of what's going on and the evil that is taking place at this day and time, that we be aware of the signs of the time, that we're not slumbering nor sleeping. I feel like a lot of us as saints are just slumbering or sleeping or in this funk or in this days where we are kind of like we have blinders on our eyes and we don't really know what's going on. When if you just open up the word, you clearly see the signs and times that we're living in people. We must be awake and we must be cognizant to the times that we're in. Now, I wanted to, I've been in Revelation in the Bible because I feel like this is where we are. And I know a while back I was talking about the 144,000 and the 12 tribes. And in Revelation 7, it further confirms everything that I was pretty much saying about out of the 144,000 are the 12 different tribes. Um, but there's also something that stood out to me, and that's the people that were in heaven that couldn't be numbered, that were arrayed in white. But let's go ahead and read. We're in Revelation 7. Verse 1, and I'm going to stop at 6. So it says, After these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Now, did y'all catch that? This is also a sign. Remember I was saying 444, why I was seeing that, and why I was seeing 1111? This also could be a clue as well. Because did you guys catch that? Catch this. It says, and after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. That's 444. Four, four. That also could be a sign as well, like our father telling us, hey, you're seeing this because I'm trying to show you the time that is at hand. So that caught my attention and that was very interesting to me so that could be another clue as to why i've been seeing 444 and now look check this out so if you go over to revelation chapter 9 you see how we just pointed out the 444 in revelation 7 now i flipped over to um, revelation 9 here's where i saw the 1111 as well so we're in chapter 9, starting at um, verse 13, and it says, And the sixth 
angel sounded and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates and the four angels were loosed now here we go here's the 11 11 which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year one hour one day one month one year there's your 11 11 there is your 11 11 so we can we can accredit that to that also being a sign of the times as well hence is why maybe that could be another reason why some of us have been seeing 1111 who belong to God. It says it right here. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. So that's like 200 million. And I heard the number of them. Okay, I don't think, I just wanted to point out, so I'm gonna stop right there. So I just wanted to point out the 1111 here. That's very interesting to me. Let's go further. And it says, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them that were sealed and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand. But here's what's interesting about this. Now, I've been sitting here, I've been studying for a while, I haven't even had dinner, but this is my food. Man do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God doeth man live. So I'm getting my food, but I'm going to have to wrap this up. But what's interesting in Revelation 7 where he talks about the 144,000, that's a specific number, okay? So he's making a clear distinction that those are the number of people that were sealed in their foreheads. And also, when we get down here and the angel, the, um, one of the elders asked John, saying unto him, who are these that are arrayed in white robes? And the... Elder broke down, one of the elders broke down and said that these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. This got me to thinking because this may, and this is what I'm beginning to see which I'm still doing more studying because I don't know everything. This is why we have to study to show ourselves approved. But if you go to Revelation, you get into 17, where it talks about the last seven uh, vials. Clearly, when he goes to judge the, the great horror or... Uh, the beast 
okay? Clearly, this is also saying how this beast had the blood of the saints and the blood of the ones who were beheaded for Jesus. So this is clearly letting you know that these are some of the people that belong to God, that have died back behind, taking a stand for Christ and not accepting the mark of the beast. Now we know that can't be about the people who were beheaded in the old time, like in the Bible days. There were a lot of people who, who lost their lives then, but this clearly is letting you know that this is in our time because we're about to come into that where we won't be able to buy or sell or do anything unless we take the mark of the beast in our forehead or forearm. So this is clearly letting you know that some of his people have died back behind taking a stand for Christ. And also, if you keep reading after, um, after these seven vows are released it's only after then when god avenges the blood of the saints so who else could he be talking about and clearly let's go down I want to find it. Yes, it says here, if we go down, we're in Revelation 18. When the beast is getting judged for all of the wrongs and the deception that it's caused and all the all of this whorish ways that people fell up under the spell and he's being judged. And it says here in Revelation 18, verse 20, is that 24? It says, and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. So they claimed a lot of lives. And let's go up a little bit further. So if you go to verse 19, it says, And they cast dust on their heads. Now these are the people that are looking back, seeing the judgment that is falling upon this great city, this great place, the beast. And it says, And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and welling, saying, the great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. So you see, after all of those things is then when God avenges the blood of the saints. So this lets me further believe and know and come to this conclusion, which I'm still praying on. It's only after then is when we're going to be met with our Savior after the great tribulation. We may have to go through some things, guys. Obviously, we just read that those who take a stand for Christ, a lot of us may lose our lives. This is the great tribulation that we may enter into, and we must be ready. And if we're not spiritually ready, a lot of us can be afraid, and a lot of us may buckle under pressure and will take the mark of the beast because we're spiritually unprepared for what's to come. And it's only after then is when his kingdom come 
and we're happy because we are at the marriage of the lamb, the supper. Let's just let, let's go to, yeah, here it is here. Let's just read it. Song of Deliverance, uh, Revelation 19. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again, they said, Hallelujah. And her smoke rose up forever and ever, and the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven opened. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat on, upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doeth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with the vesture dripped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun and cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye, you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of, flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the throne and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceiveth them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat up on the horse which sword proceeded out of his mouth and all the fowls were take were filled with their flesh so this is the judgment this is this is the judgment right here and this is finally when our blood is going to be avenged. Where Satan, he's going to be cast into the bottomless pit. It says it here. He 
And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog. To gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And of course, we'll, we get down to the new heaven and the judgment. The books of life are going to be opened and all of that. So it clearly says these are the people who come out of great tribulation. I believe that we are in tribulation right now. It just hasn't went up a notch where it's going to be like great. We're just at the beginning stages of it. And he's only going to come one time. A lot of there are some people who believe, you know, the pre-tribulation before the um, great tribulation that we won't have to endure. And then there are some who believe post-tribulation where he's going to come after all of the last seven vials are uh, put forth on the earth then he's going to come. But obviously we have to go by what the word says. It makes a clear distinction here that he's showing us who it is that are going to come out of the great tribulation. He didn't say the 144,000 that were sealed in their foreheads. It's those who are arrayed in white robes that no man can number, count all of all people, kindred, tongues, nations who are going to be the ones that are coming out of the great tribulation. So is that us? Is that us? Because a lot of the people in the Bible, in the days of Jesus and before Jesus, yeah, they suffered persecution, but it wasn't what we are facing today. And that's why I think it's us because I think that we are, that this is the end times that we're in. This is why I think and believe that it's us. I don't know, guys, I'm still studying, still praying, still staying in my word. And I'm still asking God for revelation on this. The Bible is very exciting to read. It's very exciting to study and eat good food in the word. So Man, this is something to think about, but uh, I hope this has blessed someone or sparked the interest to want to seek and pray and ask the Lord for yourselves. What's going on here? So until the next time, you guys be blessed, be easy, and ciao. Bye-bye.